Hey guys. Whew. What a Saturday. So I'm drinking out of the biggest Christmas cup ever. And I just spent 10 minutes walking around finding it. So I have a feeling it's going to be one of those days. But how are you today? I'm just going to do a sound check and make sure that you can hear me. And I have a really fun show for you today. We are going to make pajama pants. You don't need a pattern. And you can make it. I'm making mine out of knit. So you can make yours out of whatever. But um, I'm just going to double check. I've got a couple different cameras up. I think they're all working. But, you know, if I can't find a coffee cup this big in an hour, you never know. So I'll be right back. I'm just going to check that you guys can hear me. Just uh, Say hi. Tell me what you're doing today, by the way, because, uh, yep, you're all here. Awesome. Okay. Okay, so uh, by the way, do you see what's behind me here? I just unpacked all this fabric, <laughs> which is why I was a little bit late. Now I need to get it off the table, but I, we're going to be sewing over here. But some of you had said, would you do an unpacking? So while you're getting your coffee, this is what the supplies you're going to need to gather up. So while you're getting those, I will just give you a quick tour of these fabrics while you guys are gathering up your things. I'm going to sew out of a knit. You're going to need either a piece of paper or um, something to make your pattern. So it could be a muslin fabric, a cheap fabric, or you can draw right on the fabric, which that's fine too. So um, I'm going to do a knit, but you could use a flannel. You could use cotton. You could use pretty much anything you want or drink your coffee, hang out and watch, and then decide what you're going to make later. Now I have a couple pairs of pants here that I want to show you. And yes, by the way, we are live streaming on Facebook and YouTube. Okay, so here we go. These are two of my absolute favorite pairs of pants. They, I bought these, I spent way too much money on these. Like when you sew, it's really hard to buy a pair of PJs, which I don't think these were technically PJs, but that's what I wanted them for. They are the softest jersey knit ever. And they have little pockets, which I'm not going to put pockets in the one today, but we're just going to make a simple pair of pants. It would be easy to put pockets in them. Elastic waist, and I love the cuff bottom. So I have two pairs of these, and I live in these. So I thought I'd better make another pair before they wear out. Here's another version. This is more of like, um, kind of like a sweat suit. I think I actually got these at Sam's Club or Kohl's or something like, no, Sam's Club or Costco a couple Christmases ago. What brand? Heat, because I like their shirts. So this one's very similar. This is the one we're going to copy as far as you're going to copy your favorite pair of pants or shorts, and I'll show you how to make the pattern. And again, this one has a cuff on the bottom. I don't know why I like those, but they're just cute. Now, these are a little bit looser. Now, what's the difference? So both of these fit great. So if your fabric is a little bit thicker, like something like this, then it's not going to drape. I'm not going to say you're going to look bigger, but you'll look smaller if you have a knit like this. Does that make sense? Okay, so I'm going to throw these over here. All right, and what I'll do is, so this is how it's going to go. This might last an hour. I don't know. It might last two. <laughs> what else you got to do today, right? So I'm going to take breaks every once in a while to, we'll do little coffee breaks because um, my voice is not quite back yet, but it's super fun hanging out with you. And somebody mentioned that Lifetime had Christmas shows all day, so I figured we would get in the spirit too. All right, well, help me clean off my table. I'm going to take you over to a different camera and show you this fabric. And you can ask questions. I will come back up and look at them a little bit later. All right. Can you see me over here? Yes, you can. Okay, hold on one sec. Oh, thanks. I like, this is one of my favorite shirts. This is my Rouge tea. I made it years ago just out of an ITY knit. So this is what, it's already on the website. You guys have coupon codes. Um, I think the coupon code right now is Corona. <laughs> no pun intended. And then Fashion Sewing Club, you have a discount. So I'm going to put all these away, but you can see what they look like. I know sometimes it's hard to buy fabric online. 
So this, I am so excited. I have been trying to find a lightweight sweater. Look at how much this stretches. So this is actually, uh, it's just a cable knit. I think I have it under a gray black sweater knit. And it has a light drape. Let's give you a little close up here. You see that okay? I know some, I'll move slow because sometimes I know if I move too fast, it gets blurry. So this one's going away. And I got these at such great prices and you'll see them on the website. So this would make a great Rachel. Uh, actually, you know what I'm going to sew out of this is the Chloe Trench with no back. So I'm going to kind of make a loose flowy sweater jacket out of that. So that's that one. And I'm going, I need, I need to get rid of some of this fabric so I have room for it. I told you I have too much fabric, but oh, who cares, right? We need something to do. Did one of you post that if during this quarantine time we run out of fabric, then there's going to be a problem. Let's just say if I run out of fabric during this, it will, well, <laughs> I'll be like 95, so hopefully we're still not quarantined then. Here's another one. This is the one that I'm going to make the pants out of. This is like a, um, it's like a jersey knit, but it's really soft, really soft. I wish you could feel it. It feels like, uh, I don't know, butter. It's so soft. Look at the drape. So won't this make a great pant? And then I can do little cuffs because it stretches. So this is a navy. Uh, I can't remember what I called this online, but you'll, it's under the new category. But this is what I'm going to use to cut my pants. So I'm gonna leave this here. Here, you guys have all heard me talk about crepe knits. I have a ton in navy and I finally found some black. So I'm only selling half of this bolt because this is going to be part mine. But this has a good stretch, a real rich dark black. This would make a great, any any of our knits, like the wrap dresses, it would, the Shirley's coming out later today, by the way, guys. Um, if it was finished, which I was hoping it would by now, I could uh, tell you, but it's going to be later today. Anyways, this has a good drape. It would make a good top. This is called Crepe Knit. So this one, and then I have one in the same color, uh, similar color, navy. And this one, I would call this, this is like a coral. It's not really orange though. It's more of a coral orange, coral orange red, kind of like that. This is going to be great for spring. Again, a great knit. If you can wash these, roll them in your suitcase. This would make a great dress. Rouge tea, Delilah, any of those. All right. Whew. These are heavy. Now, here's the ones that you guys have been asking for. Remember we talked about, I'm just gonna lift this up just a smidge. You should never do a camera up. It makes you look bigger, but that's just what we're gonna do today. You guys had asked some good fabrics for the Chloe for spring. Well, here you go. I bought 30 yards of each, although I'm keeping five for myself because I'm going to make all three colors. So this is the navy. It has a little stretch. It's a stretch twill. So it has cotton, some polyester in it, which helps it not to wrinkle, and a little spandex. Look at this rich color. It has a little shine. And the backside just looks like cotton, like a regular cotton. So you don't have to line it. It will make a great Chloe trench. So I got this in three colors. Now this one, you'll definitely see you walking down the street in this, but this is such a good color on so many people. Hopefully me, because I'm making one of these too. This one I called red. It's really kind of, um, again, more of a deep coral. And I got one more here. Three of my favorite colors, teal, corally, red, whatever that is, and navy. And all of these are on the website too, under twill, if you look under twill fabric. A light stretch, the backside looks like cotton, so I can just finish the seams off with bias binding. All right, get all those out of the way. I got to make room for my pajama pants. Just a couple more. Check this out. Yes, I know I embroider my own lace, but isn't this beautiful? It has some navy. You could use this for sleeves. It really has just a light, light stretch. I don't think I put stretch in the description because it really doesn't have lycra in it, but because it's a looser weave. Wait, you're looking at the wrong side. Here you go. 
Isn't that beautiful? So this I think would make great sleeves. Um, anything. I love lace. So I'm sure I'll find something fabulous for that. And it matches the Chloe trench fabrics. And you've seen me use fabrics like this a lot. This is a soft sweater. It's very soft. The only negative of this one is when you dry it, you have to use a dryer sheet because it gets static clean. But I've talked about that before. But it's so soft. It has a good stretch. These make great ruched tees. Now, I wouldn't say so much for the Rachel twin set because the backside looks like this. So this is under knits on the website. I made sure I had all these up this time before because last time I couldn't remember what I called them all. So that's there. And then I've got two more, actually three more. For those of you who want a little jazz, not that we're going out at all, but this is a double knit. It has silver sparkles. The back side is solid black. So I could totally see making um, just a, even like a similar to a Chloe trench where this hangs open. One layer fabric, no facings. Reminds me of you, Judy, when you were talking about sewing with fleece, where you were wondering if you should use interfacing. I would just sew one layer of that fleece for that Chloe trench and let the, let the inside hang open. It would look great. So that's this one. Has some stretch. I think this is under knits as well. All right. We're getting there. Ooh, this would make good pajama pants too. Hmm, I forgot about this one. Now I got a debate. The jersey or the double knit? This is scuba knit. This is very similar to those purple pants, except a little softer. So I got this in white, which believe it or not, the white's on the floor, <laughs> and navy. As a good stretch, this would make great workout wear, um, a great jacket. I think, you know what? I think I'm gonna make my pajama pants out of these. They're a it's a little thicker than those jersey ones. All right, decision made. Well, good, then I can be done with this. <laughs> so I'm going to get this laid out, plus you'll be able to see the chalk better. So. I'm going to move this camera around, go get some Taylor's chalk or something to mark your fabric, or if you're gonna make a pattern on paper, that's fine too. Scissors. I'm gonna use a rotary cutter for mine. You need some elastic. I'm using one inch wide sports elastic, or it might be one, one and a quarter. I'll show, I'll show you that. Um, unless you're doing just a, a tie, you could do that too. And you could use the salvage of fabric for that. So go get your supplies. I'll meet you back here in just a second. All right, I got my coffee. And you know, I just thought of something. In case you have questions on supplies, I'll go answer questions real quick. So hold on one minute, I'll go back over to that camera. I need a cameraman. I don't know where Wynn is. I think he's uh, working on his boat today. I told him I was hanging out with you today. So I'm just gonna check real quick if you have any questions while you're gathering your supplies. Oh, I see. Boy, there's a ton of you in here. <laughs> awesome, hey Sandra. And there's Susan, Amy. <laughs> you guys are hilarious. Uh, would scuba knit be warm? So, well, okay. Can you see that fabric over here? This is the white that I was telling you was on the floor. 
I know. Why on earth would I have white fabric on the floor? Well, when it was shipped, the white got next to the navy. And that happened. So I'm just going to wash this first section. I'm sure it's going to come out. And then the rest of the bolt will be fine. So I'm going to take the first part. So this is white scuba gear. Now, I'm not making these tight pants. Oh, yes, I am wearing. These are my jeans. I know. I never wear my jeans anymore. I wear Levi's. But these are mine. And I have my thread cutters all ready to sew today. But these are going to make a little bit looser. So they're going to hang. They're a little bit warm. But, you know, these other pants that I showed you, so these are out of a jersey knit, which would be similar to that first piece I showed you. These I wear all summer. I actually wear these on the boat because it just is just enough warmth in the summer. These I wear all winter because they're just a little bit warmer. And that's how this scuba knit would be. So of course it's not breathable, it's polyester, but it has a great drape. All right, so I'll make sure you don't have any questions and then we're gonna go cut our fabric. Lisa, it would be a sauna suit. <laughs> so everything that I show you with the scuba knit, you could do on a regular knit. So if you have a rayon knit, that would be really comfortable. A cotton knit. Cotton knits, uh, just be careful because sometimes the cotton stretches too much and you'll, your knees will bug out. All right. Well, I don't see any questions, so let's go cut. All right. So... What you're going to need for this is, I'm gonna use this pair of pants because I think you'll be able to see them. I'm gonna trace these onto a piece of fabric. If you don't have a pair of pants to trace, you could use just regular pants. You could also use some shorts, which I brought a pair of those too. I'm gonna to bring out my dress form real quick. So if for some reason you cannot, you don't have any pants, you must have some pair of pants in your closet that you can use. Because all we're going to do, I'm going to show you how to do all the measurements for the whole body, but you need to use the pants to kind of get an idea of how you're going to draw the crotch seam. So in general, find my measuring tape here somewhere. Just one moment, I'm getting your other camera set up so you can watch me cut. Possibly. too big all right so I here you go this is how you're gonna measure yourself or your pants so the pajama pants are basically the same width from the hips up and down does that make sense so just take your waist measurement so this is obviously a dress form so I'm just gonna use this as an example but you're gonna measure yourself so to measure yourself just put the measuring tape behind you and measure, I hold my thumb inside here, and then basically just hold and read the number for my information only. Go ahead and measure your hips. You're gonna do the same thing, just measure around, measure your hips, and write this number down, okay? Then, this is kind of an interesting measurement. You're gonna sit in a chair. So, I don't have a chair here, but yeah, here, I'll pull the stool out, hold on. Sit in a chair. You see me okay? No, kind of. Let's see. 
Hey, Sonia. There is no written supply list. We're just, uh, this is just a fun class like that you can just follow along, but you can always go back and watch. So if you're turning to the side, you're gonna measure from the chair up, okay? This is gonna be your rise. So I always take that measurement just to have. So the other measurement you're gonna wanna take is however, wherever you want your waistband to go, you're gonna put your measuring tape there and measure all the way around to the back side. First, I'll take a measurement where it's fitted. Then I'm gonna lower this a little bit to, to where I know I want the crotch seam to go on my pants. You wanna go MC Hammer, it's all yours. So just kind of judge that on yourself. This isn't like, it doesn't have to be super technical, so don't be too picky on this. Just give yourself some general measurements. You also need to measure how long you want the pants. So here I am measuring from the waist down. You'll measure to like your ankle, unless you're making shorts, of course. And that should do it. Now let's go to the other camera. Oh wait, I see a couple questions. Hold on, I'll answer your questions real quick. So Sonia, you'll just follow along. <laughs> do you hold your breath too? You guys are hilarious. Hey Joanne, and Janice is here. You guys are so much fun. All right, well then I'll keep rolling. All right, let's switch cameras. There you go. <clears throat> All right, can you see down here okay? Make sure, these are kind of like weird angles, but I just, I thought this would be better up here so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Give me the thumbs up that you can see this okay. I think you can. All right. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fold my fabric in half because I'm gonna cut. I'm just gonna draw my pattern right on here. I need to pull out a little bit more fabric. Oh my gosh, this fabric is so soft. Now, to answer your question, I know you're thinking, shouldn't you wash your fabric first? Yes, you should. This is polyester, so it's not going to shrink. But if I was using like a knit or something like that, I would probably either allow for shrinkage or go take it off the bolt and wash it first. All right, let me get my Taylor's chalk. So I just happen to have one of my pants slopers here to show you because I think you'll see this on the navy better. This is for my jeans. But it's still the same process. So the measurement that you took, can you see these pretty good, guys? The measurement that you took from your waist to the hem, this is the front piece and this is the back piece. You will measure, ignore all these curves because you're not making a boot cut. You're going to give yourself a measurement. So mine is, I guess I better check. Because I'm going to have a waistband and a little cuff at the bottom, mine is actually one whole one yard. So I'm gonna mark a hem at the bottom. I'm just making sure you guys can see, okay. I'll bring you up closer. Actually, you know what, this is a nice straight line here at the bottom. I'm gonna use that as the hemline. This fabric is a little slippery. All right, you could also use scissors. These are serrated scissors, which will capture the fabric really good. Kind of just pulls that fabric, especially if it's something slippery like this. All right, so if my outside leg seam is going to be one yard. I'm just gonna go up here and measure 
one yard. And that's going to be my guide. to follow for my pants, okay? Chalk is not writing as nice as I would like. I'm gonna bring you guys up a little bit closer, okay? Don't get seasick for a second, because you are nested in all that fabric right now. There, is that better? Yeah, that's better. Okay, so this is my guideline of how high I want those pants. Now, if you're copying a pair of pants, you're not going to go in at the knee. You're not going to do boot cut. It's going to be a straight leg. Very simple. And I brought these out just to kind of show you what we were talking about. So here's the crotch seam. It's not going to be as fitted as a pair of jeans. Obviously, there's my waist area. So the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and just give myself a guideline across the top. And I'm just going to go ahead and cut this. I'm adding a seam allowance to this. Half an inch is what I usually use for seam allowances. And I can use the guide on my table. And while I'm there and I've cut that long, these are going to be my front and back pieces, which you'll see here in a minute, but I'm getting rid of this. What do I want for the waistband? Well, on this waistband here, you can either have the waistband attached or unattached. And I'm doing a separate waistband. So let's just see how wide this is. This is about two inches and then two inches. Yeah, so about four inches. So let's measure. One, two, three, four. And I'm gonna give myself a little extra for a seam allowance. Let me see how big that is. And that's folded. Yeah, so I'm gonna actually go five inches. And don't worry, you guys can replay this when I'm finished, if you, if you forget any of this. All right, so we have a waistband. Ooh, that was easy, wasn't it? Now, before I move any of my fabrics, this fabric looks so similar on both sides. So let me go get my glasses and figure out which side is the right side. So this is the wrong side. <laughs> I have to be honest, they're pajamas. Who would even notice, right? Beautiful. Okay, so this is... The wrong side is on this upside. There we go. That's how I will remember that. And make sure I did that right. Actually, I did not. This is the wrong side. Okay. <laughs> I put X's on there to keep track. This is going to be my waistband. I'm just going to put that to the side. We'll cut more of that in a little bit. And you know what? I think I'm going to go ahead. I want to do cuffs at the bottom. So you don't have to. The same process will be the same. You can just leave that part off. But how wide do you want your cuffs? Let's go with, I'd say two and a half inches would be good. Let's see what these are. Those are two. And these are, those are three. I kind of like those. Let's go with three. We'll go somewhere in the middle. I'm gonna cut this at five inches. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm just gonna cut the whole piece off. No, I'm gonna go six. You guys ever wonder how I design clothes? This is exactly how I do it. I'm like, oh yeah, you know what? I don't like that so much. So what I'm doing is I'm lining up my yardstick but you could use a quilter's ruler too, but I'm just here. I can see on both sides of here to measure. All right, so this is the wrong side. I don't know. I got to be honest. I kind of like the wrong side, but we'll go with the plan. Okay, I'm going to put this. This is going to be the cuffs. We're going to cut these in a few minutes. So I'll put this someplace else right now. 
All right, now we're pretty much done with this fabric. Now let me show you how to either trace your pants or you could use a pattern. So if I was gonna use this pattern because it fit perfect, all I would do is this, this is going to be my waistline, which I left a little extra, and we have the hem. Basically, you're just gonna cut two long rectangles at the fullest part of your hip. So what was your fullest part of your hip measurement? Now, let me go back and clarify something. Follow me over. Okay. We took those measurements. Now, if you were to cut those pants, your exact hip measurement, that's not gonna give you a lot of room for a little comfort. So depending on what fabric you're using, if you're gonna use a jersey knit, you might wanna add maybe two inches to each side. That would give you a lot, you know, nice and loose, they would hang. If you want them to be fitted, like leggings, you could do that too. But this fabric's a little thicker. I still think though, I'm going to give myself maybe one inch extra at the hip. Cause I don't want it to be too balloony. Now you might've noticed on some of my episodes of It's So Easy, when I make pants, I curve it up here so it fits your waist and the waistband fits perfectly to that seam so you don't have a lot of bulk with elastic. So with this though, these are just gonna be pajama pants. So whatever the measurement is here that you decide you're going to use for your pants. Now remember, once you take this whole measurement, so let's just say, I think this one is 37. Double check. Yeah, it's like 37. And I want to add one inch extra on each leg. So make your measurement 39 inches and then divide it in half because you've got two legs. <laughs> I, I, well, maybe. <laughs> All right, so that's, but I just wanna clarify how much ease you're gonna use. So I'm just gonna check, you guys have any questions for me? Just gonna move this around. How's your coffee, by the way? Although some of you might be drinking mimosas by now. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, I, oh, wait, there's a ton of you in here. Okay, so if you have questions, ask now, because I'll sit here just for a second. <laughs> Where do I get a workable table like that? Oh, <laughs> hey, Doug, you know, that table, by the way, which unfortunately, you'll probably be able to get a lot of them with all these places closing right now, but hopefully they all reopen. That was from a store that was closing. So I actually purchased all of those tables. There's two of them butted together all the way down. And I actually have a whole nother set in the basement for cutting. So when the ladies come to my studio in the fall, which hopefully all this is gone by then and we're making pants, there's a ton of big cutting areas. So and it fits all my bolts underneath. It was perfect. All right. Um, and where would I put it? That's even funnier, Doug. That was a great photo you posted the other day, though, of in the sky. Uh, plus a seam allowance. Yes, plus a seam allowance. Thank you for mentioning that. So when I'm giving you these measurements, I always, sometimes I forget things. I just do them. But um, yes, everything that we're doing, we're adding a seam allowance, a half inch seam allowance. Okie doke. And Jan, did you just say, is a dog pooper scoopers? <laughs> That's hilarious. Buy a bank, Karina says. <laughs> there you go, Doug, go buy a bank. <laughs> All right, Clovis is drinking water. Stay hydrated. Okay, what is the thing? What did you say? Hey, Jude, I haven't seen you in a while. Great to see you. What is that thing sticking out of the rotary cutter? Oh, that's a great question. So that rotary cutter is really old, and I've never been able to find this since. But that thing sticking out, I'll grab it real quick and show you. I don't know. I have the measuring card somewhere. Let's see if I can find it. I'll show you it. I can't believe you're the only one that noticed that. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Well, there's actually another piece that goes on here. So this can come off. I'm not gonna take it off. There's a, a plastic piece that slides onto here and you line it up for whatever you want your seam allowance to be. So um, if I wanted a one inch or two inch seam allowance or I'm doing a hem allowance or I'm trying to add to the fabric, this guide will go right on here. It's a piece of plastic, not my finger, but it's over there somewhere. And so you can guide that right along your chalk marks. Make sense? Yeah. 
All right, so let me just read. Hi, Christine. Yes, I'm surging the seam, but you know what? I'm going to sew and then surge because I know a lot of people don't have sergers. So I'm going to sew with a half an inch seam allowance and then I'm going to run it to the serger. But half of an inch seam allowance is what I usually always add. Unless like my leggings that I made the other day, I only had a fourth of like maybe three eighths of an inch seam allowance or a fourth of an inch. I can't remember now because I just ran it through a four thread overlock machine, which saves a lot of fabric too, by the way. All right, I'm just checking if there. Okay, I don't see any more questions. Okay, then I'm gonna keep sewing. Uh, I think Marcy said they're having a thing on TV right now about the virus. So if you take a break, you can always come back and watch the rerun later. Sound good? Okay. I actually turned the news off today because it's so depressing. Back to the other one. Oops, don't let me trip. Okay, you can see that okay? Perfect. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you first how to trace a pair of pants. Can you see the purple on here okay? I think you can. I also brought a pair of shorts. Let me bring the shorts out. Maybe you'll see that better. I think I brought a pair of shorts. Here they are. Okay, so if you just have something in your house that fits, these shorts are my fishing shorts. And this will help you get an idea of how to draw your crotch seam. So if you lay your shorts flat like this, I can see how the curve is just like here. Now these are shorts, different, very stained shorts. Let me just show you on this pair. If you take your pants to the side, and I'm actually gonna draw this line right on, why don't I do it right on here? Now remember the waistband I'm cutting later. So I'm go, the, the waistband's being attached. So I'm gonna go below the waistband here. And I'm just laying that crotch seam, adding a seam allowance, which is about a half of an inch here. So can you see that? Okay, I'm gonna chalk it in. You know what, I'm gonna lower this just a little bit because I need that seam allowance up here. So this is the top of my waist where my seam allowance is gonna, or my waistband's gonna go. And then I'm just gonna chalk this. And I have my seam allowance in place. So there you go. You can copy any pair of pants that you have, but these I know fit real well. So that's gonna be my seam and that's my cut line. I'm gonna keep this straight at the top, making it super easy. If you're doing this for kids, this is so simple. Teresa, if you're watching, tell Carter, he, he's gonna be sewing here in a minute. Now, what about this side? The back is gonna have a little bit of a longer crotch seam. Now these inseams are going to need to match, all right? So I'll show you what I'm gonna adjust here in a second. If I can get these to lay flat. Now this should be a little bit wider and depending on what size you are, um, you know, you can make your own adjustments, but just copy a pair that, that already fit you pretty well. All right, these are pretty good. So I'm drawing this exactly on it, and then I'll add my seam allowance to this. So there's my front, and there's my back. I'm, Now I need to add a seam allowance, half an inch. Now, of course, you can go and measure. 
I just have done this a million times, so I know that that's what that's going to be. And I'm probably going to have enough fabric to make a shirt, too, when I'm finished. All right, so I'm just going to use these as a guide right now. Now, these are tapered. See how they taper down? Usually pajama pants just go straight, but I'm going to copy these because I don't want them to be too bulky. I'm laying this right on that inseam. Just lay your pants flat. Now, if you can see the grain line on your clothes, that's helpful. So here's my grain line. So I don't want to go way out here. That'd be more, you'd have to have um, some pretty bold legs for that outfit. So kind of like line this up. So I'm just going to mark this in just a little bit. If you're doing this for kids, I would suggest just doing like one straight line, barely tapering it just a little bit. Out here. I don't know if I want to taper it quite that much. Well, I want them to be kind of loose, so. I could taper it more though. If you want to copy your exact pair of pants, then just trace around this and add your seam allowance. Just making sure I got all my measurements right. All right, so that's how you do that. Can you see? Now I'm gonna go ahead and cut while I have this. Let me go get my rotary cutter. All right, ready to cut? I'm just making sure you don't have any questions. <laughs> I love, of course you love purple pants, Arnell. Can you pre-order the Shirley? The Shirley's coming out this afternoon, so there's no pre-ordering, and it's only in PDF right now because with the way things are going, it's not possible to have them printed at this point. So um, you'll see this afternoon. Oh, thanks for asking, Becky. Yes, and it might only be PDF for a while, just FYI. Oh no, Sharon. Oh gosh, praise prayers for you big time. And I'm just making sure, are you only gonna have an inseam, an inside seam? Hey Cindy, no, I'm gonna have an inside and an outside seam. But if you wanted to not have an outside seam, you could just cut it on the fold, totally. Which, those are really cute by the way. Thanks Darlene. Uh, the fabric I'm using, Susan, is stretch. So I could actually make these pretty tight, like little leggings, but I'm just trying to make a casual pair to wear around the house. Stretch. Thanks, Pamela. You guys are covering me. All right, back to the cutting table. <sighs> Nothing better than a cup of coffee. All right, back over here. Now I just want to compare, for those of you that are using like a little bit lighter weight, now these are be kind of hard to see, but these are kind of the same, but they're a little bit wider at the bottom, but they're pretty much the same cut. So, you know, I don't know. I think I might taper mine a little bit more. I don't want to, I mean, if I've got to sit inside forever, I don't know if I want to like, um, feel like I gained a ton of weight. These are a little bit bigger, but this is also looser fabric. So you can see that on there pretty good though, can't you? I'm gonna use that as my guide. All right, cut away. And if they don't fit, give them to your sister. <laughs> I know my sisters are probably watching this laughing. 
They're waiting for me to give them my Chloe trench. All right, let me get this out of the way so I can kind of give myself a guide here. Now that was the fold, so I could have cut these on the fold. And you might think I'm wasting fabric over here. You know what, it was the only way to show it to you this way. Otherwise I would have been a little bit more where I folded the fabric, I could have probably gotten the cuffs off of that little edge there. I must have nicked my rotary cutter, don't you hate that? Because it leaves little shreds. Okay. That's a little crooked, so I'm gonna go back and fix that, but this has given me kind of a guide. So I'm just gonna cut this out and put this to the side for a second. All right. Here's my front. Now, can you see this? This is a little wonky. Let me go find my really big scissors. You guys listening to any good music today or anything? I had to remember to turn my music off before I got on live with you guys. Today is a jamming day. All right, so this is my front. So I'm just gonna put a big F <laughs> to tell me that that's the back and a big F on this side. I'm not gonna get rid of these yet because I need to also compare make sure that the seams line up okay. Now this is kind of rough edges here, but I'm going to run this through the serger so it's really not gonna matter. All right, the back side. And those of you that are just joining now, when this is over, I will leave it up so you can watch the replay to make your own pajama pants. Now the back side is always a little bit bigger. So I can actually see my back seam here. Do you see that? Can you see that seam okay? It's kind of hard on the purple. I'll draw. There's my side seam right there. There's my inseam. So I need to add this much extra over here, which is kind of where I have it lined up. I know you guys are going to make me wear these like on the next live show, aren't you? That'll be for our pajama party. All right, so I'm just going to cut this. Forget the rotary cutter for now. That, if I need to, here's the edge. I need to add this much more and a seam allowance. Okay, and uh, out here, let's go about right here. We're getting there. Can you see the shape of the pants coming together? Now I'm not gonna add pockets to this one, but if you guys want to, go ahead. So the one thing I wanna check is that the outside seam matches this outside seam, because if it doesn't, it's not gonna sew together. So I'm taking the front, Layering it on the back. And I'm just going to do a little cleanup. It's hard to see that navy on top of each other, but you just have to trust me on that. You don't want any curve. This should be a nice, smooth uh, seam line. No curves. I mean, there's curves, but no. It should be a nice straight line is what I'm trying to say. No ins and outs. That looks pretty good. Now let's check the inseam if that matches. So it looks like the fabric slid just a smidge right here.
these are my Kai scissors. Some of you guys always ask what these are the 7280s. And um, Fashion Sewing Club, you have a discount in the Fashion Sewing Club for these right now for everything on Kai scissors. So go check out your code. And Judy, I saw your message. I will go check that out for you as soon as I'm done live today. I wasn't online to see that earlier. All right. Are you guys getting yours cut out? Or are you just watching me do all the work? <laughs> all right. So there is my front and my back and my back. I don't really need notches. I just measured these. These are fine. So now you can see that doesn't this look like a regular pair of pants? Pretty much. Yeah. And I just did that by tracing in a very quick, easy way. Now there are much, you know, more technical ways to copy a pair of pants, but I think you got the idea. All right. So let's see. We got the front, the back, the waistbands over there, and the cuffs are over there. So let's go finish those. I'll meet you back at the other camera. All right. Did you get yours cut out? I could wait for you, but I'm going to keep rolling. Oh, just watching so I don't miss anything. Hey, Kay, how are the kids? Uh, yes, your code is in the Fashion Sewing Club, Pam. <laughs> All right, could I see one question here, Lynn? Could could it possible be able to do and watch at the same time and take all? <laughs> That's cute. All right, guys, I'll do all the work, and then you have to wear your pants on the show next week. How's that? Kathy's cutting along. <laughs> all right, guys. So let's cut the cuffs. Um, I think I need to bring you a different camera. So <laughs> hold on one moment. Hey, Wynn. Hey, how are you doing? Good. I'm uh, sewing with the wolf pack. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. I just wanted to say hi. Everybody say hi to Wynn. <laughs> We're making you a pair of fleece pants to go with the ones I made you 20 years ago. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. You take care. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Just a cute story. Do you all remember the pants I told you that I made him? Like when we'd been, oh gosh, dating maybe a year or two. I just gotten out of college. And um, so you're totally broke when you get out of college. So I made him a pair of fleece pants and I went and bought a men's pattern because I'm thinking, well, it's got to fit, right? <laughs> you know what a hard time that we have fitting our patterns? These things, when I finished them, he held them up and he was like, whoa, whoa, these are nice pants, and <laughs> Did you hear him? He said he still hasn't grown into those. Uh, if he ever does, we'd be calling him Win the Lumberjack. <laughs> All right, guys, so let's cut this, and then we're going to take like just a three-minute break so I can go get some more tea. I got to keep my voice going. Okay, let me get the camera in the right spot. Hold on just a moment. Keep yourself busy for a sec. Let me just find my charger. I wouldn't have had to keep switching these, but one of my video cameras took a puke today, kind of probably with my coffee cup, right? All right, I think you're on. Let's see. That should work. So with these, 
One of these is the waistband, and then one is the cuff. So the cuffs is the one that's a little bit longer. So all I'm gonna do there is fold this in half, like I was going to put this around my foot, <laughs> and literally, all right, here you go. Take this, not over jeans, but I think you'll get the idea. Just measure it to how tight you want it on your, on your foot or on your ankle, okay? That's all you gotta do. So here is my exercise for the day. I'm just going to measure this. That might be okay. That's how you measure. Now, let's go back to this camera and I'll show you how I'm gonna do this because I am half dressed already. All right, here you go. Let me grab my purple. So these were, this is the pair that fits perfectly. You guys can see that okay? There you go. Make sure I have the right one. The waist one is the one that's shorter, so it's this one here. Again, I'll just put the wrong sides on the outside. Here's my salvage. I don't want to use that as part of the pants. Now this has a seam on the inside and the outside. That's interesting. I guess because it's tapered a little bit. Oh yeah, see? So if you only tapered it on the inside, it would be kind of awkward. That's kind of cute, but I'm not doing that. I'm just gonna make one cuff. We're making this easy today. Do I have the right one? I do not, that's the waistband, oh my word. Here you go. And then give yourself a little seam allowance on there. I'll just do half an inch to keep so I can remember what I'm using. There's one. So I'm basically just cutting a rectangle of fabric. And I better mark the wrong side or I'm not going to remember. Here you go. Don't you hate that when you get a snag in your nail and then it snags all your fabric? That's the worst when you're working on sweater fabric, I swear. All right. So these are our two cuffs. And I'm just gonna write C. And by the way, if you snag fabric with your rotary cutter, it is time for me to change this blade, which I'm not doing today, but if you snag and you have to trim little pieces, it means that your blade is dull or you ran over something. So those are my cuffs, put those to the side. And there's, I can make a whole other pair of pants. And here's the waistband. So let's go back over here for a sec. So for the waistband, I'm gonna leave this for now. I'm gonna cut this last, well, I'll trim it at least. So, the waistband is going to fit your actual waistband where you want the pants to go. So let's just say on here, give yourself, leave a seam allowance. And this, this fabric stretches. So if you're going to, one thing I did not mention, if you're using like a woven fabric, like cotton, flannel, something like that, you could either leave this whole waistband attached and make the whole thing out of cotton, just fold it over when we get to that part and add your, um, insert your elastic. But because I'm using a ribbed at, at the top, it can be smaller than the actual seam. But sometimes it's hard to squeeze all this extra fabric from your pants into the waistband and it looks all puckery. So you should, I do it one or two ways. I'll either cut this and say, this is about what my waist is going to be, or I will measure and make sure that this part matches the top of the pants, and then I will put elastic in so then it just scrunches up at the waist. Does that make sense? 
if this binding does not stretch or you, you're using a fabric that doesn't stretch, this needs to be at least as wide as your hips to get them on. So I'm going to leave the waistband for a little bit later. All right. I think it's time to, uh, you ready to sew? All right. Let's take a two minute break. I'm going to get some tea. Keep yourself company for a second. I'm gonna get the camera switched and then you can watch me bring the machines out. I've got a sewing machine and a serger. We're gonna be using both. All right, switching to tea. And I'll double check that you guys don't have any questions for me that I can answer real quick, and then we'll start snowing. Have you guys ever tried this tea throat coat? I learned this from being on It's So Easy TV. Every once in a while, if I'm taking like Sudafed or an allergy, because sometimes in the studios they're really dusty, or, well, the new studio isn't, but the old one was very dusty and had a little bit of mold. And um, so I would take Sudafed. Well, then I would, my throat would hurt and I'd lose my voice. This stuff is the best. If I can get it open. I got my squirrel to hold up my tea bag. You guys take such good care of me. All right. So let me just double check. You don't have any questions. Oh, no. Clovis is crocheting. <laughs> Darlene, I'm dreaming about being a size eight. Hey, Esther, what size is my craft room? Well, this is um about 7,000 square foot, 3,500 upstairs, 3,500 downstairs, but this is my office. So um, on the last, if you look on YouTube on my last live video, that I gave kind of a tour of just the sewing part. Uh, name of the tea is... Throat coat. Yeah, it's awesome. And you know, it was hard to find actually. I found it at the grocery store. All right, let's get the sewing machine out. So let me show you how I'm going to do this. I'm going to switch cameras again without making you dizzy. So just hold on a second. I'm just going to move this around. Right. <laughs> Hold on a second. I think I got it right. <laughs> Maybe. I'm doing it backwards. Hold on a minute. All right. Rearranging, you guys. I try to do this without you getting seasick, all right? It doesn't always work, but I get an A for effort. Let's switch her over. 
so I already have, these are the pans. I'm going to get rid of these for now. And I'm going to get rid of the mats. These are great, these DIY. And then the back side has the cork board. Okay, let's move this. Voila. This is my horn cabinet. It's taller. I love it because I can sew standing up if I want to. Make sure all my cords are out of the way. I've got my iPad, iPod um, on here for embroidery. So I'm using the Brothers Stellaire today, which, full disclosure, I am their brand ambassador. I guess you have to say that for legal aspects, right? All right, let's make sure that this is... There, that looks pretty good. And I have the serger set up over here. Turn the machine on. And the only other thing I'm going to need is to make sure I have the some navy thread. So I'll be right back. I just thought of something. I just thought of something. You guys are going to want to see the thread because if I use navy, you're not going to be able to see it. So I'm going to use pink. I'll use light pink in the bobbin and hot pink on top. All right. And let me just move this camera over so you can see. All right, here we go. In case you missed that. Pink in the bobbin and bright pink on top. They don't match, but these are for you. And who's going to see the inside of my pants anyways? All right. If you don't know how to wind a bobbin or you need tips for that, I have a couple of videos on YouTube where I showed how to do that. They were feature videos. They're also on Facebook. All right, so I'm all threaded. Use my automatic needle threader. And then I'm going to figure out how to situate you so you can see. Now, you can see this. Can you see the serger okay? So in the serger right now, I have, I was using Wooly Poly, my Wooly Poly thread in the loopers. And I just did a pair of leggings, so I switched to Wooly Nylon which is what I'm using now. So that's, I'll bring you closer over there. Got all my little bins, Janet. And let me just move the cameras a little bit better so you can get a better visual here. So that is maybe better for here. And one more second. So we'll do it. All right, hold on one sec, guys. I'm just moving the cameras just a little bit better so you can see. Oh, yeah, you want me to drop the comments? Hey, thanks. Sorry about that. I sure can. There you go. Sorry about that. And thank you, Miss Melody, for texting that. So I'm going to put this one here. I think 
that will help you see the surgery if I go closer there. Why don't we move that over there? You see that a little bit better? So before I get started, I'm just going to make sure you guys can see, and I'm going to just have to trust your, what you tell me. So that will be for the serger. Is that pretty good? Yeah, that's pretty good. So again, I, I'm just going to use the black thread on here. So I have the woolly, you could use woolly poly or woolly nylon in the loopers and then just regular thread here. I just have it set up for a three thread and I'm gonna leave it that way. And for the sewing machine, which let me just bring you a little bit closer. There you go. How's that? Pretty good? Okay, so do you really have to do sewing machine and serger? No, you could just do one. I would, I, I'm gonna do both because I know some of you don't have a serger and I want to make sure that you can see that. So I'm also going to bring over, there you go. All right, I think we're good. So you should have your next cup of tea by now and we are all ready to sew. protect my table from a little gift from Joanne. So the first thing you're going to do is take your pants and we're going to sew each outside seam and inside seam. Now there's different ways to do this, but this will just be easy. So I'm going to take my pants, make this a little bit bigger here. And I'm going to move this over here so it's not in your way here's my back so I have that facing right side up and here's my back so I have the right side facing up and then here's my front I keep getting stuck on my needle now speaking of needles this is a knit fabric so I think I'm using a stretch needle let me double check you want to use a stretch or ballpoint needle for this or you'll skip stitches. Here's my front, so I've got right sides together and right sides together. All right, I'm just gonna stitch with a half inch seam allowance. Again, I'm using pink threads, so you can see this. Now, I'm not gonna pin this, I don't need to. I'm just gonna line up if I, I'll put one pin at the end. So just lay this flat, make sure your seam lines up. Remember, we're gonna run this to the serger, so even though I had a couple ragged edges, it won't matter. Putting my needle in the center, and here's a little tip for you. When you start sewing these seams, you wanna start in a little bit, because I don't want to get all my knit fabric in that hole, in your, um, down in that hole. We were talking about that yesterday on the live show. And uh, because this has stretch, I'm going to change and use a zigzag stitch. So come on over here. I don't know if the glare will be okay if you can see that, but I'm actually just going to stop for a second. There's a lot of different stitches you could use. If you're using just a serger, you don't have to worry about it, but I'm gonna use a zigzag stitch and I'm going to change the width to very narrow, like a one, and I'll go with like a 2.0 length, all right? And that's just because if you're not using a serger, when you go to stretch this, it'll rip out your stitches if you're just using a straight stitch, okay? All right, let's test it and see what it looks like. Yeah, that's not bad. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and sew this seam. Boy, I definitely did some cutting, some uh, <laughs> messy cutting, holy cow.
Now after I do this side, the rest I'm going to do with the serger because I really don't think you need to see both after this. Bring this up just a little bit. If you don't have a serger, you might want to invest in that because it just makes sewing knits so much faster and easier. Okay, so this is what it ended up looking like. Just like this. So that's the zigzag. Just a little zigzag, so that way if you stretch it, it will go back into place. Someone said, can you move the phone? I don't think I have a phone out. All right, now let's go to the serger. I'm gonna switch you around for a second. Oh yeah, you can see right in my teacup. <laughs> All right, let's move this sucker over. So if you were using a sewing machine because you're worried, like maybe you have a hard time lining up your fabric on a serger, which sometimes that happens with slippery fabrics, you would run it through there, but now I'm gonna run it through the serger and trim off all the excess. Make sure it's on. Now one thing you have to be careful of is when you're using the woolly poly or the woolly nylon, this stuff can get really messy, so you might have to put a net over it. See how it kind of just like loosely comes over? You want to make sure that it's tight inside of these. Yes. How's it looking? So you can see I'm surging right up to that line. I just want to make sure that my tension is tight enough in here. There we go. Looks pretty good. That looks better. At the beginning, this the tension wasn't right on those, which it, I'll go back and fix those. But that's the difference. That's what it should look like. All right, now I'm going to just go, I'm just going to do the rest with the serger because I think you get the idea. So now I have, you're going to stitch your inside leg. the surgery you could just have like a, a quarter of an inch or three that looks fabulous that's what I'm talking about so nobody will see this side of my leg but I got a little pink in there at least I'll know it's mine right all right, now do the same thing for the other leg. Louise, you have your first serger? Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the outside leg. It doesn't matter if you do the outside or the inside first, it really doesn't matter. So now here's a little trick for you. If you have never seen some of my craftsy classes on serging, when you start serging, you don't want this big long thread tail. Just stitch for a little bit of the fabric, lift up your presser foot, wrap this around, and cut it off. Voila. Now, sometimes when you're surging, this also comes with a bigger table on it, which kind of is helpful. Just making sure I'm not shaking stuff off my table. But I usually hold my hand and hold the fabric like this so it goes through instead of just letting it hang. Sometimes that's not so good for your fabric. See my hands up here?
I love these trays because it collects all of the garbage and then I leave my trash can underneath. All right, so the outside leg's finished. Now we're going to the inside leg. So now I have, let me just bring you back to the other camera so you can see just a little bit better. Oh, hey, Lisa, if you're, if you're surger, I'm just uh, reading your comments real quick so you guys have questions. If your surger is, has, um, really loose stitches. Are you talking about like what happened at the beginning here? <laughs> you got to love it when you do it live too, right? I didn't check. I just grabbed the surgery from over there. So if it's like this, which that is what you call a hot mess, that is because that my right side here on the surgery, the looper was not in the tension disc. So even though your machine, if it, it depends how old your machine is and some things like that, but I had an old surgery where even though it said to have each of the dials on number four, I had to move one all the way up to almost a seven. So obviously there was something wrong with it at that point, but um, I had used it like a lot, lot. And so I had, so adjust your tensions and just test it. It's also obviously different on other fabrics, but that's what I would do first. So I'm just gonna double check you guys don't have any other questions here. <laughs> You have new needles on order. Yep, Tracy, you guys are all helping. Your upper looper's not catching the other threads. Well, that's interesting. Well, that I would drop off at your dealer then and have it fixed because it could be something, I mean, there's other technical things it could be. Oh. <laughs> Did you just say your machine is 25 years old? <laughs> okay, well. <laughs> All right, guys. All right, so now we're going to sew. We bring you back over here. The next step is going to be, and just follow along. Here you go. Aren't you, someone just said, are you going to go back and fix this? No, these are pajamas. Who cares, right? Now, if, I, if this was for a customer or real pants, I would go back and fix that. But I already sewed the seam. If I had not stitched that seam, I would go back and surge over it, or I would trim that off. But um, because the seam is secure, I'm not worried about it. So take one of your pants and put it right side out, and one pant leg inside out. Just slide your pant leg into the other one. So here I am, right sides together, both my pant legs. I'm just gonna use a pin to hold this in place for a second. Got my little. Oh yeah, I know, I love these. These are the thread cutters. So, um, and Fashion Sewing Club, you have a discount for thread cutters in there too, by the way. Thanks to Vans. I saw his mom at, um, the show in Puyallup, if you guys missed that. Okay, so I'm just, I'm pinning this so you can kind of see this. This is, I'm basically sewing the crotch seam from front to back now. It's matching up just perfectly. Now this, again, I'm just gonna run this through the serger. I think it's just faster. And if you're gonna sew, then you, I already showed you how to do that. 
All right, ready to go back to the other one? I'm getting my exercise today, that's for sure. Okay. Now, if you put pins in something and you're getting ready to surge, be careful not to stitch over these pins. I, that's why I always put them in sideways like this. Yep, they look great. So I know you're going to ask, what's the difference between using woolly poly or woolly nylon? Well, woolly nylon is a little bit thicker. Woolly poly is, um, that's the thread I have behind me that I did with a collaboration with Wonderfill, which I love. I just used this because this was already in the serger. Uh, what it does is it makes it just a little bit fuller. And I'll bring these, I'll bring you guys closer to this in a minute. So if you notice, my knife is lined up right here, right outside of this seam line that I drew, chalked in. All right, there's my inseam. And I'll bring this just a little closer so you can see. So if you're using a woolly poly or woolly nylon, see how it just fills that? I'm only using a three thread overlock right here. See how it fills that so nicely? And then just regular serger thread in the needle. And guess what? It stretches, so when you put your pants on and off, you won't pull out any stitches. All right. Now let's get to the cuffs. Pants are coming together. If I wanted to, I could try these on, my, which I'm not doing right now, but I could put them on the dress form if I wanted to. All right, so here are my pant legs. And just gonna make sure I get my cuffs here. So here's the cuffs. So the first thing I wanna do is uh, just stitch down the seam. So then it'll be, you got your fabric, right sides together, and just stitch that down. And I'll just bring you over here with me. sliding out. Okay, come back up here. Now I'm just, might as well just do both cups while I'm there. So again, you have your right sides together. Oops, sorry. Right sides together. <laughs> just stitch down the side. You're making a cuff. over here now I saw somebody say do you have to what do you do with these thread tails is it going to mess up like is this going to come unraveled well this is not a cover stitch machine this is a serger and the reason I'm just trimming these right to the edge is because none of these are going to be left alone they're going to be attached into another seam all right so this is the wrong side so just turn up and make yourself a cuff. Once you have the cuff, you might want to put it on your leg. I'm using my arm as an example here, but slide it on your leg and make sure it's tight enough. If you want it tighter, then go ahead and try that. So let's just bring it over here to the dress form real quick. Well, here, I'll just do it on my own leg. I 
I'm not sure that's going to work over boots. All right, let's just slide this on. Like a socks. <laughs> yeah, I don't want it to be super tight, and that's fine. That'll be fine. If you want it tighter, then just go ahead and sort take that in just a little bit more. Okay, back up here. <laughs> TMI, right? Here's this, and here's this. So these are my cuffs. So you're turning these right side out. And I, I would probably usually use clips, but this, um, I'm using silk pins right now, so it shouldn't damage the fabric, but you really just would probably not want to pin these too much because you don't want to puncture your knits. Okay, so now just slide this on. So here's the raw edge. Slide this on your pant leg. Now, where do you want your seam to go on your cuff? I would say probably on the inside leg because then you won't see it. So here's my pant leg. This is my inseam right here. I'm just going to put a couple pins in there. So my cuff is obviously smaller than my pants. So you're going to kind of just stretch it a little bit so that can fit. I don't know how good you can see that with the navy on the navy. So, so I'm just stretching it. And it, so I'm basically halving it right now. Just, you know, you've heard me say quartering it. Just give it a stretch so you can see where that looks good. I'll put a pin over here. So as I surge this, I'm going to stretch so I can ease in my pant fabric. But I'm going to give myself a couple pins just to hold it in place because this fabric is so slippery. There you go. All right, there's my cuff. Let's go back to the serger and I'll go ahead and attach that real quick. And then I'll double check you guys don't have any questions for me. We are almost finished, believe it or not. <clears throat> Wynn's gonna get home and say, what'd you do today? <laughs> I made pajamas with the wolf pack. So I'm just going to slide this in. Now I could take this off of this. I don't know if you, what surgery you have. This comes off and I could try to slide this on around like this if I want to. So let's try that. I don't usually do that. I, I usually just turn the fabric inside out, but a little tip for you. I don't even know if you do your machine. You might do that. Try to keep my hands out of the way so you can see. Can you see this okay? All right. I have a feeling it's a little bit of a tight spot, so I don't know if you can see that. So I've attached the cuff, and there's the cuff for the bottom of my pants. Okay? Now, I'm not going to do the other one. I'll do that one after we're not live. Now I'm going to do the waistband. So back over here. All right, can you see okay? Here's the top of the pants. Now remember I was mentioning about the waistband. If the waistband's too small and you do too much gathering, so this was fine for the cuff. It's not puckered. This is a little bit thicker fabric. 
Um, but let's just say that you had a lot to gather in there. You would have all these little wrinkles, and I don't like that look. So I'm going to go grab my waistband and show you a way if you had a waistband that was attached or not attached. So I would kind of like the waistband to be the exact same width as the pants. So let me just bring you out just a little bit so you can see this. I'm going to put one seam at the center back. So if I just laid this flat, and then if I do that, then I can just um, make the elastic smaller inside of here. All right. All right, with right sides together, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and just stitch this now. I think it'd be faster for, you could do it with, with the serger too, but I'm gonna bring you in here. We're just going to sew that. Not as loud as the surgeon, right? <laughs> this machine's really quiet. Okay, and if you wanted to give it a pressing, you could. I'm just going to finger press that open. All right, now let's just fold your waistband with right sides together. I'm just going to pin this around. Or if you're using clips, that's fine too. Just so I can keep it in place. Now there are a ton of ways you could attach the waistband here. Um, a lot of times what I will do is actually put the elastic inside of here first, but I think it'll be easier for you to see this way. So I'm just going to, here's, this is the back and on your pants. This is the back. Stirrups, oh my gosh, are you guys talking about stirrups? <laughs> hey, Charlene, <laughs> that is so funny. That's kind of what I was thinking when I lifted that up, but I didn't even see your comments. I'm like, what do these remind me of? Uh, the old athleisure wear pants, remember those? Oh gosh. So I'm just gonna pin this in place all the way around the waistband so I can see. I hope you guys realize that this is very simple to do without a pattern. I mean, just go back. You, Those of you that have jumped in now, you can go back and watch from the beginning. So let me just make sure that I have both sides even, which I don't. All right, hold on a second. One thing I forgot to mention. When you have your waistband, you've got your center back and your center front. So I'm gonna put a pin right here at the center front. Actually, I'll put two pins right there so I remember it's the center front. Center back, center front. Otherwise, you'll have too much waistband on one side or the other, which that will look kind of funny. There we go, so there's my center front. So again, back to the pants. I already pinned the center back and I'm going to bring this up to the center front of the pants. Go ahead and pin that, and then you can just ease each side in. Because the waistband's just a smidge smaller than the pants, but not too bad. What you don't want is you don't want the waistband to be bigger. So that's pretty close. I mean, if I stretch it just barely, it's fitting on there. Give it a little stretch. And then what I do, let me make this a little bigger so you can see this is how I... I'm stretching the waistband and then just use your hand to walk in. This matched the side seam right here. So again, I gave it a little stretch. This is the center front, this is center back and then walk in. I can mark that side. So now that I have the side seam, then I can just give it a little stretch right here. I'm stretching the waistband just a little bit to fit. And 
one more. And that's how you can make sure that the waistband is even all the way around. Let's go to the other side. Hopefully you can see this with navy on navy, but I think you're getting the idea. Walk in. So those thread cutters that I have attached to my waistband, when we go fishing, I noticed that I have a few pairs missing from my office. I think you know who brought them on the boat. He's like, these are awesome. I go, well, <laughs> that's probably what Vance designed them for. and They just work for sewing too. All right, so I'm all pinned. I'm just gonna use a sewing machine since you're right here, this'll just be faster. Um, now I'm going to leave a small opening, okay? So <clears throat> I'll start sewing, let's see. Where's the center back? Uh, I'll start sewing here. And then when I get here, I'm gonna leave an opening like this, just so I can get that elastic in. But the first thing I wanna do, because I don't need an opening in the whole thing, I just need an opening in the back side here, right? So let's just unpin the second layer, just for one section. So now I just have one layer attached to the pan. All right, can you see that okay? And if you have questions, just post them. I can see them. Now this is not where the hole is gonna be, remember? I am attaching this to the pants all the way. So now that I left that, so this is one layer sewn to the pants. Go ahead and cut your thread. And now go ahead and stitch. So this is one layer right here. So now I'm gonna stitch both layers together, but I'm gonna leave this little opening for my elastic. This is like a really basic way to do the, an elastic waist. Again, I'm just gonna use a sewing machine. I think you'll be able to see the pink thread better than the black. Now when I'm finished with you guys today, I'm gonna to go add the other cuff and I'm gonna run the waistband through the serger just to make it look more professional. Although I kind of like this pink thread. You guys have seen the inside of my jeans. I serge all those things with a little bit of pink. All right. We can try that all the layers, all three layers here. This is a great project for kids too because there isn't a lot of fitting involved and a lot of just straight seams for them to sew. So okay, when you get your girls sewing these, I wanna see photos of it. Actually, Liz, your daughter was a little sewing bee. I saw that video you posted, that was cute. All right, I wanna make sure that I don't stitch all the way around. I wanna leave that one little opening. And then we just have to insert our elastic and we're just about finished. Oh my gosh, this fabric is so soft. I think I could live in these, although you guys said you'd be hot. I don't have that problem yet. <laughs> oh, and Susan, tell Steve I get an A plus. I actually got all my shelves put together yesterday. All right, so I stitched all the way around. This is what it looks like. And I have one little opening here like this. Now, yes, I just have two layers just stitched to here because once you have your elastic in, I would serge the seam and it would be all finished. You could do a double folded if you wanted, but this is just so fast and easy. So let's go back to the dress form. This is where I'm gonna insert the elastic. My last step will be to insert that and attach this, but I'm gonna take you back to the other, to the other camera for a second. And we'll take a look at the dress form. Okay, I've got a hot mess over here. <laughs> Bring you back up here. Tracy, what did you, okay, let me just, um, 
going to read a couple of your comments and we're going to try these on the dress form and add the elastic and then we're done. So this was your uh, super fun day of sewing, hanging out with me. Or I should say I'm having a super fun day hanging out with you. All right, let's see what you got. Scuba knit it is. Yes, that's the fabric, scuba knit. Uh, Tracy, I use four colors in my searcher always, trying to learn to make it easier to check my tension. That's a great tip, by the way. That's a great idea. Okay, Susan, how do you keep your elastic from rolling over in the band? A couple things. I use sports elastic, so I have to find it. I was just using it yesterday. Um, so a couple things. Uh, well, you're going to see here, but I usually will... A lot of times I will actually attach the elastic right into that seam I showed you, but that's a little more advanced and I wanted this to be super, super simple. So once I insert the elastic into here, let's just try these on my little lady here. Let's see which side switch. I see one little pucker, which that will drive me crazy, so I'll have to fix that. But other than that, it looks pretty good. Thanks. The front and the back look so similar. If you can't tell, just figure out which one is the longer crotch seam, right? All right. I think you might see this better if I turn. Hold on just a second. I'll get you guys flipped around here. Should I say I'm hiring a cameraman? <laughs> All right, I'll switch cameras with you and take the comment down so you can see. That was a great question, by the way. All right, so here we go. Oh my gosh, these are so stinking cute. So here's the one with the cuff on it. I'm going to have to say I love these. These are so fun. I'm totally going to wear these. So you can see the waist is just a little bit bigger. So once, so let me go get some elastic. I know I had it here, so hold on a second. And I'll give you your tips for that. Oh, here it is. All right, so this is the elastic I use. It's sports elastic. I sell it on my website. I buy huge rolls of it. It's only like maybe a buck 25. And it can twist and stuff, but it, it's really, um, when I show you what I do with the side seam and the back seam, I think it'll help you. So the first thing you wanna do is on your own body, put your elastic around you. Now, if you're using a thin elastic, you're gonna to need to make it even tighter. But this is um, pretty stretchy, as you can tell. I use this for my leggings, um, all that stuff. This is about an inch. Hold on, I just lost my scissors. One sec. I think this one is inch and a quarter. I could double check for you, but I think it's an inch and a quarter. So you wanna make sure it's tight enough that it'll hold the fabric up. That's pretty tight. So I usually give myself like maybe an inch on each side. Let's cut it there. And I'll double check one more time. Yeah, that looks good. So I know I'm gonna bring this over about an inch so it'll fit. All right, now let me find. Yeah, I cleaned my studio. All right, so this is really bad. I cleaned my studio and I don't know what I did with all of the um, 
my little turners to slide my elastic through. I've got like these little bodkins. Anybody have a bodkin you can loan me? <laughs> well, let's see. When in doubt, I could use a pin. How could I not have my bodkins? Maybe it's in the elastic drawer. All right, I'm switching it back up to the top screen. <laughs> you know what a bodkin is? It's like this long, you attach it to the end so you can slide your elastic through. I have no idea what I did with mine. Because the last two pants I did, I had actually attached the elastic. Well, dang. You think I'd have a safety pin when I need it? All right, so let's, I'm just gonna walk you through the last steps because this is really easy. I'm gonna slide this through that waistband, all right, all the way through. Once I find my bodkin, there must be like a bobby pin or something, but once I do that, I will sew my elastic together. And then what I like to do is I actually, in the center back where that seam is, I will actually stitch right through that, right on the seam. Attaching it right, so when this is inside, I'm actually stitching the elastic right to that, which prevents it from twisting. Another thing you could do is sometimes if I have really slinky pants, I'll put little tacks on each side seam too. Because there's nothing worse than when the elastic kind of like starts twisting. And if it's not attached in the back, you could really have a problem with that. So all right, I'm going to sit down and answer your questions. And our pants are pretty much finished once I find my bodkin. All right, I got my teeth. So let me see what you have to say. <laughs> I know, a big safety pin. I don't even know where those are. I don't ever have safety pins around here. Oh, maybe in one of Janice's. It's on the boat. <laughs> I so agree. I wonder if it's in here. Well, I have a paper clip. I suppose that would work. All right, I'll use a paper clip. This is like so not protocol, but when you're desperate, you gotta do it, right? All right, so we'll keep it going, the purple thing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm so glad to hear that. <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah, so when you sew down that elastic in the seams, it just keeps it from rolling. <laughs> that is so funny. Well, you know, uh, when I lost a few other tools, like, this and my Kai scissors, Wynn took those on the boat. Yep, great tip. Yeah, I think the paper clip will work. Well, Taffy, that's because I cleaned the studio this last week. If you watch my last episode of um, Behind the Scenes. All right, so let's strip the lady. Here you go. Back here, where's my little hole? Here's my little hole. And I'll switch you back to the other camera because we'll just go ahead and finish these then. There you go. my paper clip. Good provision, you guys. And find the hole in the back. Here you go. There's the hole. And just take this and slide it all the way through. This should be no problem sliding this elastic through because this fabric is so slinky. The other thing you nobody has mentioned yet, which maybe you did and I missed it, uh, quite often the, waist, the waistband will be the same width as the elastic. If it's exactly the same, it is so hard to slide it through. And in that case, you probably wanna just sew the elastic right into the waistband and then attach the waistband, which I'll show in another lesson when we do our leggings.
All right, now just be sure when you start pulling this through that you don't pull it through the back side. And I also, every few minutes, just take a second to make sure that the, that the elastic is not rolling inside the waistband. Because if you roll it at the beginning, then you'll never get it out. So by the way, we're almost finished with this, but I have to ask, what are you guys doing tonight? Anything exciting? I'm gonna have to probably say no, but if there's maybe some good movies on or something. I will be, as soon as I hang up with you guys, I'm going to print the Shirley, lay it out, make sure I don't have any misspelled words because I usually have one or two of those somewhere on there from my illustrator and load it on the website and the Shirley will be up and we're doing a virtual class next week on the Shirley. So you'll have to stay tuned for that. All right, so I pulled this out, cross it over just a little bit. Now I gotta get this thing off. Okay. Just take this to the sewing machine. The sports elastic is so soft and it's easy to sew through. I've been using this for years. I use it in every width. Oh, you want me to take that off the screen? Sorry, guys. Is that what you're calling me for, Jules? <laughs> oh, 81st birthday, Mary? That's awesome. All right, there's the elastic. Finish sliding it all the way through, making sure it doesn't twist. This is the one part that you do have to make sure it isn't twisting as you're getting it in place. All right, she's all in there. And then the last step will be to close this seam right here, this little hole. And then once I hang up with you guys, I'm gonna run that through the serger so it looks nice and tidy. All right, there we go. All right, so let's put this back on the lady and see what the waistband looks like. Oh my gosh, these pants remind me <laughs> of like, I don't know, something that I think my dad wore in the 70s. Dad, are you watching this? Because I think you had a pair of pants like this. <laughs> All right, there's the back. This is the front. All right, so once I have this on, so this is what I would do is try this on my own body first. Make sure the elastic is even everywhere. And then I would go back and stitch this through, but I try it on first to make sure all the side seams are in the right area. Hey, these turned out pretty darn cute. And then I've got the cuff on this one. I'll put the cuff on the other. Not too shabby, right? All right, so that is your pajama pants. Uh, that's right, it's Janet's anniversary today. I forgot about that, happy anniversary. <laughs> All right, so do you guys have any questions? Because that was, uh, there is your pants in like two hours. Well, not really two hours because we looked at all the fabric first. All right, so I saw somebody ask, hanging out with family. You know, Charlene, I have to say, out of all of this craziness, that is one thing that um, I've noticed families are getting together and that is so awesome. It is awesome. What else do you have to do, right? Angie, you'll love that sports elastic. So let me just check. Oh, you're welcome and thanks for watching. So those of you that are going, go ahead. I'm going to look up a couple codes for you guys for those that wanted um, any of that fabric. Fashion Sewing Club, you have a code in there for your discount. If you guys don't remember what it is, I think I extended it from last month. I just kept it easy. So let me just look up a code for you. 
for a discount. And the discount, by the way, let's see, that's my blog, in case you don't know the blog. And this is where you go to join the Fashion Swing Club. There you go. And if you click on there, you can go to the Fashion Sewing Club. But I have a discount for all of you, too. So Fashion Sewing Club just gets something a little bit extra. Let me just find a discount because when the Shirley launches later today, should be today. If not, it'll be morning at the very latest. Oh, and I also need your help on something. So next week, while I'm looking up your code for you, I'm starting something very exciting with Brother. So... We know that everybody's home and literally sewing is so much fun to do and we all have a pretty good stash. So we have put together and I kind of put a teaser about this on Wednesday. We are putting together a daily. I am hacking the brother Facebook page, not literally hacking. I'm taking over with the other brand ambassadors and we are going to offer you a fun. Some days might be a Q&A. Some days might be a fun project, something like this. Uh, so if you have ideas for projects, I wrote down everything you guys told me last week and they were all great ideas. So if there's anything specific, you'd like one of us to teach, but I also, we're putting together a watch party for an all day. It's so easy replay. So if you have a favorite episode or you have, it could be from all, we're celebrating 10 years. 19 seasons. So if you have a favorite episode, let me know. I will go back to the comments and piece these together. We are going to have a lot of fun the next few weeks. we got to do something while we're stuck inside, right? And I got my voice back. So that's a bonus. All right. So your coupon code is here you go. I'll put it in the comments. It's Corona, C-O-R-O-N-A, all capital letters, and let's see if I can put it up here. This is for 15% off anything on my website. There you go. Coupon code, Corona. And that is for AngelaWolfPatterns.com. So when the Shirley comes out, you get a discount on that. Fashion Sewing Club members, you have 25% off. So that's in the club. Um, and I think that's about all you guys asked for. Oh, aren't those pants fun? I, I might go back and tweak them a little bit. I'm going to try them on, see what they fit like. Now, if you did want to put elastic, you could do a drawstring. Something like that would be fine. But they're just so simple. For kids, they'd be awesome. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, I know. Beaches are closed now, too. Hmm. Hey, Jenny, you came in late, but it's great to see you. And um, don't forget, once this is over, you guys can start over and see how I drew the pattern. If you have questions, just go ahead and keep leaving comments. I always see them. So did I forget anything? Hey, Janet, great to see you. Oh, Tracy, on my surgery, which needle do I measure from to set a seam allowance? Measure from your far left needle because that will be where your seam is. That far left needle is the one that where the edge of your seam is. So a little tip for you, Tracy. If you're going to serge the entire pair of pants, I would just make maybe a three-eighths of an inch seam allowance. I saw somebody ask, what's the difference between three thread and four thread overlock? Three thread is just three threads and four is four. Four thread is just stronger. That's the only difference. So for these, I'm not going to be out like running around and working out and things like that. So the three thread's probably fine. I would say typically I usually use a four thread though for something that's going to get a lot of active wear, like uh, my tops and things like that. That's all four thread. Oh, thanks, Becky. All right. I think I'm just going to make sure I don't have any more questions and then I'm going to let you guys go and Oh, Melody, I just saw that the keys are closed. Didn't they tell everybody they had to be out by this afternoon, right? Because we were looking up Key West yesterday and it said closed. All the hotels are closing, everything. Well, at least you're stuck in an awesome place. I got to say, I mean, not that Michigan isn't so bad, but yeah, I did hear that. Uh, do I have a workshop on how to alter downsize the pattern? You know what? I don't have a specific workshop on that, but 
you might want to join the Fashion Sewing Club because I'm always giving tips for that. And we do a lot of technique stuff in the Fashion Sewing Club. It's just a monthly club. Can you cover how to troubleshoot cover stitches on sergers so it doesn't skip stitches with the brother? Yeah, Kimberly, Kimberly um, a couple of things. Are you using new needles? That's a big deal. We had a whole discussion about this uh, the other day in the Fashion Sewing Club. Use new needles. And if you're cover stitching on a knit, you might have to actually use, well, you should actually use stretch needles or um, I've been using stretch needles. And now they have stretch needles for the serger too. For the baby lock sergers, they have a specific number of needle you should use. And that really makes a difference. Um, try to think if there's any other tricks for that. Usually it's the needle though. Because if I get skip stitches, which does happen, uh, it's always I have to change one needle, then it's fine. So try that. All right, guys. Well, thanks, and I hope you have a great day. Enjoy. I heard that there, you guys said there's like a ton of good Christmas movies on. So I'm going to go back and drink my Christmas tea. Thanks for hanging out with me for a couple hours. What else is there to do today, right? And I'm going to go finish my pants, and I will talk to you soon. So watch out for this. And, I'm oh, I see one more question, Elizabeth. Can you use regular all-purpose thread in the serger? Oh, absolutely. I just like woolly nylon or woolly poly because it just looks so much better and it's nice and soft and it fills up that um, seam a little bit. But totally, I actually will sometimes just use regular sewing machine thread in the smaller spools. Or if I'm low on thread, I'll wind a bobbin so I have one extra thread. I use the bobbin for the needle. Like, I mean, use that like because it's not very much on there. And then use the thread spools for the loopers. I used to do that a lot for customers because sometimes you would have one pair of pants that came in that you don't have serger thread that will match. And I just use regular universal thread. No problem at all. All right. Bye, you guys. Hey, Jennifer. <laughs> Let's, oh, yeah. Check your uh, needles. Have a wonderful weekend, guys. Keep in touch and we will talk soon. All right. See ya.